Okay, so we just added the jet to the physics engine and gravity is applying and it's falling out of the sky. Now what we want to do is make it so when we touch the screen uh, the jet will move upwards, fly upwards a bit. So um, what we need to do is we're going to write a function that um, is going to be called when we touch the screen. So just function touch screen in here. I'm just going to say event and then um, end. Okay, so again, a function is just a group of instructions and that's going to run, and in this case, we want it to run whenever we touch um, basically well, anywhere on the screen. So, um, what we're going to do is we need to set up what's called an event listener. So, we're going to say runtime colon add event listener. Just quickly again, so make sure that's a colon, not a dot, and it's all case sensitive, so if it's a capital, just put a capital. Um, add event listener. Now the event, previously we looked at the uh, enter frame event, the one that uh, is called 30 times per second, no matter what. This one's a bit different. Um, a lot of the setup's the same, so again we're at adding an event listener to the runtime and calling a function. That's just what we were doing here in these ones too on the city graphics again, runtime, add event listener. Here it was an end frame event, um, but same sort of idea. We're calling a function. So end frame is the one if you want something to move or if you want a function called 30 times per second. Here, touch screen, this group of instructions or this function is only going to run when someone touches a screen. If they're not touching the screen, it's just going to sit here and not do anything. But as soon as they touch the screen, we want these instructions to run. Okay, here, um, sometimes when you set up an event listener and a function, it can be a good idea just to um, just to check it's working. So I'm going to say a print. Print will never appear in your final um, in your final app, but what they do is appear in the uh, the compiler window, or the output window. Just they're a good way when you're programming to check if something's working. So when we click or touch on the screen, if this function call or event listener is working, it means whenever we touch the screen, it should call the touch screen function and we should see the word touch printed out in our console window. So let's give it a go. Well, it's running, I'll just restart it. Go over to the console window and we are oh yeah, there it said touch touch, so let's go back here. Okay, I'm just like, touching it, touching the screen a lot, or clicking, as the case may be at the moment. There we go, so it's definitely it's working. So that's good, at least we know that um, this is being called. Because sometimes, like, if your function's not working, a good starting point is like, well, is the function even being called? Is it, is, uh, is at least that happening? So I'm just going to comment that out, because we know it's working. All right, so in here. Now with the touch event, um, there's a couple of things to think about. The main one is the touch comes in two parts. So there's when you touch the screen, that's when your finger touches the screen, and then there's when you let go, that's when your finger actually leaves the screen. And sometimes you want different things to happen on both. Well, treat both as, as different events, I guess is what I'm saying. So, and we can do that, um, luckily. So we, um, and again, if that didn't quite make sense, uh, it will in a minute after you see this. Event dot phase. If it equals began, so that's when you first touch the screen, then um, we want something to happen, so we have an if statement for if that's true. So if it's true that someone's just touched the screen, we're going to um, run whatever's in here. And then we can set up another one of these, so I just copied and pasted, but if the event dot phase equals ended, uh, we can do something else. A good example of where you might want to use this, and there's a third one actually, if you're actually moving your finger, but a good example is like a drag and drop. So if you want to drag and drop something on the screen, when you first touch the screen, you'd want the begin phase to begin your actual dragging, and then the middle one, I just can't remember its name at the moment, um, there is a third one for if you're actually moving your finger across the screen. That's when you actually want to drag, and then when you let go of the screen, you'd want to run the instructions to, to stop dragging the object, basically. Here, ours isn't quite so complicated, but what we basically want to do is when we begin touching the screen, we want to start moving the jet upwards, and as, as long as our finger is on the screen, we want the jet to be moving upwards, basically. Soon as we take our finger off, we want it to, uh, to no longer go upwards, so it'll just stop having force applied. Okay, so there are our two, two phases. 
Um, again, just to make sure this is working, I'm just going to quickly do a print. So, print, and then say began. Copy that. And then say, uh, oops, tap that in a bit much. Okay, whatever. Um, end it. Okay, just so we make sure our if statements are working correctly, so we do that a few times, and we should see in the console, yeah, began, ended, began, ended, began, ended. Okay, so we're going to have another function in here called activate jets, and it's going to take parameters, that's what these things are called, self, oh, hang on, self event, and end. Okay, so, um, what we want to happen here is when we begin, like so in the began if statement down here, let me get rid of that print, and we're gonna actually set up an enter frame event from within here. So jet dot enter frame. So we're applying an enter frame event to the jet. And um we're gonna say activate jet and then um do our oh, I'm just gonna copy from up here. For some reason in Corona, it like, takes two lines to set up an enter frame event. Oh, that's not it. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's get this copy... paste. Okay, so we're setting up an event list now, but it's the jet who's been applied to. Okay, so basically, when we touch the screen, as soon as that begins, we're going to keep calling, we're going to call this activate jets function soon as we touch the screen, which is just going to constantly call this 30 times a second. And in here is where we're actually going to move the jet by saying self, which is the actual jet graphic, because we are applying the end of frame event to the jet. So um, self.apply force. Apply force is part of the physics engine. Now we don't want to apply force to the x-axis, so that's going to be zero. Here we're going to say negative 1.5. So we're actually going to reduce the... Um, it's Y value, which will make it move upwards. Again, just remember that Y axis is flipped to the usual. Self dot Y. Okay, so these are the values. Nothing on the X axis. Negative 1.5 on the Y axis, and apply that zero to self dot X value, and apply that value to this the Y property. Okay, so um, let's just see if that's actually working. So um, here I'll restart it. And it's not. Uh, let's just check the console quickly. Okay, I've got a... You might have used a dot instead of a colon. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, here. I think. Oh, yeah, it's probably this one. Okay, let's try it again. And, that. and yeah, there we go. Okay, it's not stopping, though. If I run that again, see it starts. And I'm pressing, goes up, but then it just keeps applying the force. We don't want that. So when we end, when the user takes their finger off, we want to remove, just like we uh, added an event listener, you can remove an event listener when you want something to finish. So we're going to say runtime dot remove event listener. And now we can leave the rest the same. It's literally the same, but here we're actually just removing it. Run that. And now when we let go, so I'm pressing, and as long as the press happens, it goes up, let go, and it removes that event listener. So there we go.